Hi and welcome to what's new in DeepGlow 2 slash quick start guide. This video is aimed at users familiar with DeepGlow 1 who want to quickly get up to speed with all the new bells and whistles. So here's DeepGlow 2 at its default. Looks pretty similar to version 1 but don't be fooled. Performance is faster and the quality is better. We now have a glow mode which I'll save for last as that's the most exciting. Coming down to input we have some new controls. To demonstrate these I've got a black and white gradient. Increasing the threshold removes pixels below the thresholded value, and then we can smooth that out very cleanly by increasing the smoothness. Saturation bias is new. I'll turn on a colored gradient to demonstrate this. In the middle of our four point color gradient, the colors converge into this ugly gray color with low saturation. When we increase the threshold with saturation bias at max, we can discriminate just those desaturated pixels. Smoothness also works with this too. Inversely, we can go to negative 100 to discard the most saturated pixels. Input masking works exactly as version 1, so let's move on to gamma correction. We now have the ability to fine tune the amount of correction we want instead of just an on or off switch. Because I'm working in a linear color space, which the plugin is telling me here, if we add 100% gamma correction, we happen to be overcompensating. Looking at half and then none, if we turn the auto gamma back on, we can see it's giving us the same result as no correction at all, since we're already working linearly. Clicking gamma info does the same as version 1 and tells us if correction will be applied or not. Aspect ratio is exactly the same. You could choose to bias the glow to a particular axis as well as to set it on an angle. You might wanna increase the quality preset if you're using an extreme value. This reduces downsampling and gives a sharper result. Chromatic aberration now has two unique modes, pixel and radius offset. Pixel works the same as version one. It adds a splash of color, but if you push it too far, the effect is kind of ruined. Glow aberration multiplies the glow radius per channel and allows you to get a halo of color depending on the channel multipliers. You can click shuffle to conveniently shuffle your current values. Let's turn the color gradient back on and we can see even with a colored input, we're getting an interesting result. You can even combine both methods if you like. We now have multicolor tint. So let's go back to black and white to visualize that. This is great for adding uniform colors to the result regardless of the color of your input layer. Let's go with overlay and this brings us to one of my favorite new features tone mapping. You might have noticed the overlay mode makes the glow look over bright, which is a very common issue when working with HDR values. Since I'm working linearly, I'll set the blend to add and we can see we have very large color values in the info panel. Tone mapping to the rescue. It applies a range of algorithms to smoothly remap HDR values back into standard def range so we can export them and have the visual result match our After Effects composition accurately. We'll go more into tone mapping in the in-depth tutorial. Next up is Lens Dirt Texture, which allows you to map a Lens Dirt layer to the brightest glow values. Let's change the view to Lens Dirt Input, and you can see I'm using one of the classic Optical Flares glass textures, courtesy of Daddy Kramer. Change the view to the matte, and we can see the luminance of our glow, as well as the matted result. If we increase the brightness of our viewer, the dirt is too prominent, so let's punch the gamma to isolate it just to the brightest regions. You can also inherit the color of your glow to create a more realistic composite. In this case, we're inheriting the color from the multicolor tint. Switching the view to final result, we can change the exposure to make it more apparent or subtle. Moving on to quality, we have the handy quality presets that determine how much downsampling is applied. Lower presets equal faster render times and softer results. We now have a half float option on by default, which will internally use half as much memory to increase performance without much impact on the final quality. You can confirm this by switching it on and off and there's generally zero visual difference. There's custom buffer expansion if you're animating layers in and out of the composition bounds, and the rest is unchanged from version one. Now for the part we've all been waiting for. We have a new mode called Lens Iris, AKA image-based glow. It looks a little crazy right now since by default the plugin is using itself as the iris, which is completely unrealistic, but it's fun to see the shape of the glow update depending on the characters we have. Let's halve the radius and see what we have inside the new iris tab. We can choose which layer we want for the iris and I'm gonna use another texture from Optical Flares of a light crate. Under the view options, we can view the iris. This one happens to be very detailed. So the iris sampling quality of standard isn't cutting it. And we can see that in the noise patterns appearing. Let's bump that up to fine to resolve the issue. Iterations is how many stacks we want and the easing is how much we ramp up the radius each stack. 0% being linear and 100% being exponential. You can do up to 20 iterations and as few as one. Now, before I mention that the custom gamma correction becomes more important, and we can see that here, as we increase the correction, the shape of the iris becomes more vivid. So this is great for fine tuning how prominent you want your iris shape to feature in the glow. One more thing to mention in iris mode is that we don't have the new radius aberration, and that's because it would be prohibitively expensive computationally, but we do have pixel aberration as normal. So that's a general overview of the goodies we have in store for you in version two, and I can't wait to see the results you all come up with using these new features.